on the mic. No, definitely not. You know, I don't let anything come into my mind uh, to disrupt what I'm going to do from Saturday night. You know, Jake Paul's not coming to my mind once. And I hear all the talk about him saying, oh, he doesn't fancy the fight anymore, then he fancies the fight, then I'm a potential opponent, then I'm not. You know, get your facts straight before you speak my name. And if you want to fight, let's get on and do it. You know, I, I'm, I'm ready whenever, because he does, I don't need a training camp here. It's very unfortunate what happened to me in December, because if December had really gone through, you wouldn't have been able to hear his name ever again in boxing, because he is useless. He cannot fight, and there is no chance in hell he beats me, and I do not even need to train for him. So let me get Saturday out of the way, put on a massive performance, a great knockout, what I'm planning on doing, and when I'm on the, on the couch eating pizzas, burgers and donuts, what I love to do, let him give me a call and I'll be there the next day, because I do not need to train for him. This man can't fight. That's why he's, that's why he's dodging everybody a boxer. That's why he's fighting 60-year-old UFC fighters that nobody wants to see, because he only, cause he's got very low pay-per-view numbers last time. If he wants the big numbers, he knows where to go. Let's get it on. But until then, don't talk if you don't want to fight. When you say massive performance, he did get a pretty big knockout in his last fight. Do you want to better that? I'm not interested um, in what Jake Paul does. I mean, it's easy to get a knockout over somebody who's over the hill and 45 years old in Tyrone Woodley. It's very easy to knock him out. He doesn't move his head or throw a punch. You know, I've got a live opponent coming over. You know, he's young. I think the opponent's 20, 26 or 27. He's 10 and 1. He's coming for a fight. And he's an actual boxer. These guys that Jake Paul is fighting, they're not boxers. This guy that I'm fighting on Saturday night would wipe the floor with Jake Paul. He's probably been fighting all his life, had a ton of experience. So this is how I'm fighting me on Saturday, and Jake Paul would ever be. So, you know, if he wants to fight, he knows where I am. I'm not hard to find. And finally, your dad this week said that he sees shades of Triple G in the way you fight. So I'd just like to know a little bit more detail. It's obviously a huge compliment. Um, and Andy Golovkin, uh, what do you think he, he meant by that and what are those shades that we might see in your final Saturday? Yeah, thanks very much, Dad. Appreciate it. Thanks for the support. Thank you, yes. Um, and that literally comes from what we've been seeing in the gym. You know, David's been in camp, David's been watching me spar, um, and they've been holding me home with some very, very good fighters. And in sparring, you know, if when I take that in Saturday, when I take sparring to the ring, you're going to see what I can do. Because I've been, I've been in there, we don't get people that can knock over in sparring, maybe easy spars. I've not had one easy spar my entire, my entire life. 15 and 16 years old, I was, I was sparring Tom Spunnell, who's now number two in the UFC or something like that. I've been full trade-offs with him, and I was about 10 stone. You know, I know what I've got inside of me. I've got heart lie and balls like King Kong, we all have in this family, and you're going to see it. So, only me and my team know this, and when it, in each fight, you're going to see more and more and more of that. And shades of luck, it's a very nice compliment. And uh, yeah, yeah, I see myself. On a mission. Best of luck, Tommy. <laughs>